These are 50 crazy facts about the world's most painful conditions. First, let's talk about gout. Number 50. A pain in the toe? Gout is a condition that can often slip under the radar, as it normally starts off as just pain and swelling in the big toe and the surrounding area. It's easy to mistake as a simple stubbed toe or arthritis, but it's actually a serious condition. It's most common in men, but women aren't immune either, and most people who get gout are older. The pain can be minor in some cases, but in serious flare-ups it can make walking extremely painful or even impossible, leading to people having to walk with a crutch. And the culprit isn't what you might think. Number 50. You're in trouble. Gout is joint inflammation, and the best way to detect it is for a doctor to draw fluid from the joints and test it for uric acid crystals. This comes from a substance called purines, which occur naturally in the body but are also found in certain foods and drinks. When they break down, they produce uric acid, which is typically dissolved in the blood. However, when the body produces too much or has excess introduced through foods and drinks, the kidneys can't keep up. Crystals form and the crystals build up in the joints and cause serious pain. And gout can be the unfortunate aftermath of a party? Number 48. Let the good times hobble. If there's one behavior associated with gout, it's probably drinking. Beer and red wine both contain high levels of purines, and if someone's going to engage heavily in drinking regularly, the odds are they already are working their kidneys overtime. The result might be a frequent recurrence of gout, which is just another reason why a doctor might advise you to cut back on the alcohol. But purines are also found in red meat and fatty meats, which means people who have an unhealthy diet might also get an unpleasant surprise as well. But no one is immune to gout, not even royalty. Number 47. The Disease of Kings In medieval times, the odds are a king would be the healthiest person around. After all, he was secluded in his castle while the peasants toiled in the field and lived in less than hygienic conditions. But there was one disease royalty couldn't hide from their castles, gout. Peasant diets usually consisted of grain, whatever vegetables they could grow, and whatever little meat they could scrape up. The king, meanwhile, sat down to sumptuous banquets frequently, and usually chased it with flagon after flagon of wine. So it's no surprise that if anyone in the old days got gout, it would be the king. But hey, at least he probably didn't have to walk that far. And gout even became shorthand in politics. Number 46. Tune in. It was a weird trend in the early 20th century socialist and liberal cartoons. Why exactly did they portray old rich men as hobbling around on crutches? It was because, much like in the time of kings, the rich were most likely to get gout due to their meat-rich diet and easy access to wine, especially during the Great Depression, when many working stiffs were struggling to get enough food on the table, and the idea of disease that was often caused by eating and drinking too much was the perfect way to make fun of the elite. Now let's talk about a condition that comes from a natural part of every month, until something goes wrong. Number 45. What is endometriosis? Sorry guys, this might be a little TMI, but the ladies have it harder. Endometriosis gets its name from the endometrium, which is the tissue that lines the uterus. Every month it sheds and this is the process of menstruation, which is not a fun time to begin with. But endometriosis happens when the body goes a little haywire, when tissue that resembles endometrium is found outside of the uterus, usually in other reproductive areas. The immune system goes haywire, it responds to the hormones, and the body starts growing new blood vessels and nerves in this tissue, and the result is chronic pain and swelling, even scarring. And for those who suffer from it, the effects can be life-altering. Number 44. All-consuming. The most common sign of endometriosis is intensive pelvic pain that comes and goes. Some areas only experience mild pain, but during periods the pain is usually at its worst. This can be bad enough that women will be unable to go to school, perform at work, or even get out of bed in some cases. Additionally, the damage this condition causes to the body over long periods can result in heavy scarring in the pelvic region, which can lead to difficulties conceiving or carrying a child to term without treatment. But sometimes it can be invisible. Number 43. A Sneaky Condition if you ask many endometriosis sufferers what is the most frustrating part of their condition, they'll tell you it's not the condition itself, it's the fact that it took them so long to be diagnosed. Many doctors assume it's either standard period pain and offer only regular painkillers, or even disregard the woman's pain and assume she's hypochondriac or seeking pills. Complicating things, many endometriosis sufferers may be lucky enough to not experience severe pain, which means that every case manifests differently, meaning that diagnosing the condition is often challenging. The good news is, it can be treated. Number 42. 
multiple options. Once a doctor has successfully diagnosed a woman with endometriosis, there are a few options for treatment, but it comes with mixed results. Doctors prefer this option because of the lack of complications, but success can be mixed. Medications can include anti-inflammatory pain pills simply to make the condition manageable, but it can also include birth control pills to slow down the process that causes the disorder. In other cases, surgery to remove the damaged tissue and allow for recovery is recommended, but only for severe cases. And the scariest thing is, no one is sure what causes it. Number 41. A Lingering Mystery What causes endometriosis? No case is the same, but a few factors have been identified. For one thing, genetics is likely a cause, which means this may be mom's most unwelcome family legacy. Endometriosis is also caused by elevated estrogen levels, so taking birth control pills can help to reduce your chances of suffering from it. The good news is, this same effect happens during pregnancy. It can also be caused by a retrograde menstrual flow and the exaggerated immune response that happens as a result. And only a thorough exam can discover which of the above is the culprit. Now let's look at another mysterious condition, another one that also targets women. Number 40. What is fibromyalgia? Another disorder that plagues people and is often very hard to get diagnosed. Fibromyalgia is a chronic illness of the central nervous system characterized by one primary symptom, pain, and lots of it. Along with chronic fatigue, it can significantly impact people's ability to function on a day-to-day -day basis. But because it spreads throughout the body, there is no one cause that a doctor can pinpoint, and that makes it very hard to diagnose, especially since many doctors don't know how to identify it. That's because the pain is actually coming from the brain. But there are some key symptoms to watch out for. Number 39. All over the place. As vague as it might seem, the American College of Rheumatology has identified some key symptoms to make it easy to identify the disorder and make it possible for people to seek treatment. These include multiple painful areas of the body, especially when they're far apart from each other with no other apparent cause, and symptoms that include fatigue and difficulty sleeping or concentrating. If these symptoms are temporary, you're normally fine, but if they last more than three months, it's a red flag for fibromyalgia and one group of people is more vulnerable. Number 38. Why the ladies? Much like endometriosis, fibromyalgia is a disease that heavily affects women. In fact, it's believed that 75 to 90 percent of people diagnosed with the disorder are women. But unlike the prior disorder, which affects the reproductive system, there's no indication of why this is the case. Increased research has indicated the number of men with the disorder is increasing, and this might be the result of better research. But there is another possibility. The subtle and often invisible nature of fibromyalgia's pain means it can be written off as just regular aches and pains, and for some men, they're not going to go to the doctor for anything short of a stab wound. The good news is there is hope. Number 37. Cutting back. A lot of alternative medicine experts have been pushing fibromyalgia diets, claiming to have a miracle cure for the frustrating disorder. But while some of them might show some effectiveness, it's not any sort of miracle cure. Rather, it's just common sense. Doctors suggest cutting back on things that can cause inflammation. This includes alcohol, red meat, refined sugars, caffeine, and processed or fried food. Which sounds like most fun things, but hey, at least you'll have the energy to enjoy those occasional treat days. And another treatment has shown surprising success. Number 36. Usually when a doctor prescribes yoga to treat a medical condition, many people might wonder if they know what they're talking about. But surprisingly, yoga, along with Tai Chi, has shown results in reducing the pain of fibromyalgia. Is this an actual miracle cure tied to the practice? Probably not, but the calming nature of meditative therapy might help to alleviate some of the symptoms like fatigue and lack of sleep. Getting a good night's sleep might reduce inflammation, which might make the disorder a bit more manageable. The next disease has a clear cause, but that doesn't make it any less painful. Number 35. What is peripheral neuropathy? This painful condition comes back to one thing, our nervous system, or specifically the peripheral nerves. These massively long nerves extend all the way from our hands to our feet, extending to our extremities, which means when they're damaged, we're most likely to feel the condition in those areas. That means the fingers and the toes are the first warning system for this condition, and the alarms are anything but pleasant. Peripheral neuropathy manifests as stabbing pains and weakness in the hands and feet, and it can strike at any time and the culprit is one that's all too common in many countries. Number 34. Diabetes No, Wilfred Brimley, it's diabetes, and it's the leading cause of neuropathy. 
The chronic disorder is caused by issues with regulating the blood sugar, and while some cases are early onset and don't correlate with the diet, the most common type of diabetes is type 2, or adult onset diabetes. Getting the blood sugar under control can reduce the symptoms of diabetes as well as the neuropathy and results in better overall health. But managing your blood sugar isn't exactly easy when it feels like nails are being driven into your hands and feet. And unfortunately, even those who aren't diabetic aren't safe. Number 33. A Mystery Disorder The first thing any good doctor will do when testing people for peripheral neuropathy is to check for diabetes or pre-diabetic readings, but often that isn't the case. Other top causes for this disorder include vitamin B12 deficiency, a side effect from chemotherapy, traumatic injury, or poisoning. The latter three might heal and the former can be easily fixed with supplements, but another cause might be more concern. Alcoholism is a risk factor for neuropathy and left untreated things can get much worse. Number 32. Failure to Grasp The tingling and stabbing pains might seem terrible, but they're also a warning sign of ongoing damage. There are three types of peripheral nerves, sensory, motor, and autonomic, and this disorder can affect all three. The sensory nerves deliver the pain, the motor nerves might make it harder to grab onto things or walk if damaged, and the autonomic nerve damage could even affect basic functions like breathing and sweating if left untreated. So when the body starts talking, it's definitely a good idea to listen. And the good or bad news is your diet makes a difference. Number 31. Eating for your nerves Your mother might have told you to cut back on that junk food years back. After all, that soda will rot your teeth. But could it be rotting your nerves as well? Studies show that foods with excess sugar, excess fat, artificial sweeteners, and refined grains cause stress on the nerves and can irritate the disorder. While it won't address the core of the condition unless it's caused by diabetes and the diet change will help get it under control, it can calm the nerves and make it easier to manage peripheral neuropathy until the main cause is fixed. Many of these disorders are a warning sign, but a few are a blaring alarm like this next one. Number 30. What is Acute Pancreatitis? The pancreas is the little workhorse of the body, an organ in the upper gut that produces the juices to digest food and the insulin to regulate blood sugar. If it stops working, that's usually lights out, which is why it's one of the most feared cancers. While not every pancreatic disorder is fatal, all of them are serious. Acute pancreatitis is a sudden swelling of the pancreas and is usually characterized by sudden onset intense pain, the kind that can stop a grown man in their tracks and send them to the hospital and doctors take any pancreatic issues seriously. Number 29. Better safe than sorry Almost immediately, someone suffering from acute pancreatitis will be swept into a series of tests, including blood tests and a CT scan. This is to initially rule out the possibility of cancer, as well as to check for gallstones, one of the most common causes of pancreatic swelling. An ultrasound or MRI can usually identify those quickly, but neither of those are the most common cause of pancreatitis, and it's important to identify it quickly because when left untreated, severe pancreatitis can lead to infection or damage to other organs. And the culprit is our old friend. Number 28. No one wants old Billy to drink. Gallstones are the most common cause of pancreatitis and doctors will check for them immediately. If there are none present, they'll usually ask one simple question, how much do you drink and for how long? Alcohol puts the body under stress as it processes it, and the pancreas has to work overtime to get rid of the toxins. Over the years, the pancreas wears down and becomes more vulnerable to infection and inflammation. If neither of these are the culprit, doctors will check for medication side effects, infections, and injury. And if you happen to be diagnosed with this, better plan on some time off. Number 27. Sorry Boss Doctors don't mess around with pancreatitis. Unlike the previous conditions, this is generally treated with a short stay in the hospital, while the patient is given pain medication and fluids to help bring the swelling down. But there is another much less pleasant part of the treatment, the pancreas needs to rest, and that means usually doctors will prescribe several days of fasting as part of the treatment. This keeps the pancreas from being under excess stress during the healing process, but leaves the patient very hungry and in cases when longer rests are needed, the patient may receive intravenous nutrition. And there's one cause that is often unexpected. Number 26. Thanks, Dad. Most causes of pancreatitis are due to gallstones, alcohol abuse, or other illnesses, but there is a form of the disease that can be inherited, and it gets passed down from generation to generation like a tacky family heirloom. Hereditary pancreatitis is associated with a gene named PRSS1, and it provides an increased chance of pancreatic swelling as well as pancreatic cancer. 
There is no cure for bad luck with the genes. Doctors just recommend keeping on your diet and getting regular screenings to fend off the attack at the pass. Most of these conditions are painful, but this next one can be deadly. Number 25. Appendix Attack It might be one of the most common causes of surgery among kids, appendectomy. The odds are we all had a kid in our class who was out of school for a week and came back with a gnarly scar that he couldn't wait to show off. It's all due to the appendix, a tiny organ located in the lower right corner of the abdomen. The appendix isn't completely useless, but it plays a minor role as a store for good bacteria. That is, until it gets an infection. And when the infection grows and turns into appendicitis, watch out, because the last thing you need is for the appendix to blow. Number 24. Emergency Surgery Appendicitis is an emergency that is typically characterized by pain in the middle of the abdomen, followed by moving to the lower right side of the abdomen. It can start as mild, but then become agonizing and be associated with fever and nausea. At this point, the treatment is usually to remove the appendix, which is a simple procedure, if gotten to in time. Because if the appendix bursts and leaks toxic contents into the digestive tract, it could become a life-threatening emergency at worst, or a long hospital stay at best. The good news is, you might be back to normal sooner rather than later. Number 23. Be back in soon, boss. Appendectomies are among the most common surgeries performed today, and they usually involve only a small incision in the abdomen and a removal of a minor organ. This means that most patients leave the hospital after only a day or two, and unlike many surgeries, you're going to feel better almost immediately after getting your appendix out. After release, doctors advise taking it easy for two to four weeks, but if your job doesn't involve heavy lifting, odds are you'll be back to work or school within a week. That is, assuming nothing goes wrong. Number 22. Ticking Clock When someone's diagnosed with appendicitis, it's usually a very fast process to get that organ out, unless there's a hitch in the works. During the COVID-19 pandemic, many hospitals put a complete stop on non-emergency surgeries, and appendectomies weren't considered emergencies except in certain cases. It was possible for patients to instead be outfitted with shunts that would relieve the pressure on the appendix and allow it to drain non-surgically but left them with some level of constant pain until the crisis was over. But a misdiagnosis can be deadly, and no one is safe. Number 21. The Closest of Calls Alice Tapper was an ordinary 15-year-old when she came into the hospital with signs of appendicitis in 2021, but doctors quickly ruled it out after a quick scan and diagnosed her with a viral infection instead. But as her symptoms got worse, her parents battled to get a second opinion, and it probably helped that her father was the famous news anchor Jake Trapper. After a second examination, it was revealed that Alice's appendix was already perforated, and they caught it just in time to save her life. Alice wrote an op-ed after her recovery, revealing that the condition can be misdiagnosed up to 15% in children, and a misdiagnosis can be deadly. This next disorder won't kill you, but for many men at the urinal, it might feel like it. Number 20. Pain in the… What exactly is a kidney stone? It's a giant pain in the last area where someone wants one. These are hard deposits made out of minerals and salt that form in the body and get lodged in the kidneys. They're typically hard and sharp and can cause massive pain in the kidneys while they're stuck in there. But when something is lodged somewhere, it has to come out eventually, and it can only come out through the same route which everything that gets filtered through the kidney takes, the urethra. That can make for an agonizing time when you try to pass kidney stones. But there isn't just one type of stone, there's a veritable gem mine in there. Number 19. Not exactly a treasure chest. Did you know there are four types of kidney stones? Calcium stones are the most common, hard stones that form after a buildup of too much calcium. They make over 80% of kidney stones, but the other three are rarer and tend to have other causes. Struvite stones, which are the largest, form after repeated urinary tract infections. Uric acid stones form when the urine is too acidic and leaves mineral deposits behind. While rare cystine stones are usually the result of a genetic disorder, and when they're passed, they can be just about any shape or size. But is what they say about them really true? Number 18. More painful than childbirth? Ask any woman if a kidney stone is more painful than childbirth and she's likely to laugh. But the reality could be different because kidney stones can get terrifyingly big. While many are smaller, they can be as big as a pea or even as large as a golf ball. 
The largest ever passed, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, is over 5 inches long. Stones of this size would be impossible to pass naturally, and we bet most people are cringing just thinking about it. The biggest stones are usually removed with surgery or by using ultrasonic therapy to break them up so they can be safely passed. And as for how they form, mom was right again. Number 17. Drink up. Certain foods can lead to the forming of kidney stones, such as high salt and animal protein foods, but you don't need to worry about calcium. Salt keeps calcium from being absorbed, and so high salt foods should be avoided. But while changing your diet can help, there is a much better way to fend off kidney stones. Mom always said keep drinking water, and she turned out to be right. Lack of hydration is a factor in as many as half of kidney stones, and if you're peeing anything more than pale yellow, watch out. But unlike past disorders, this one is not rare. Number 16. So many painful peas. While many of the most painful conditions are rare occurrences that come down to bad genetics, it's not the case for kidney stones. It's estimated that as many as 12% of Americans will develop a kidney stone in their life, and that's likely to only go up as high salt fast foods become more and more popular. Fortunately, this means that there are always urologists ready to make money by treating kidney stones and developing new and improved technology to break them up. But seriously, just keep drinking water. Ask anyone who's had kidney stones. There's no faster way to ruin a good time. This next disorder can show up in an unexpected place and completely derail a person's life. Number 15. What is trigeminal neuralgia? It's been said that a toothache is one of the worst pains imaginable, except that fortunately is usually easily resolved. The dentist numbs the area and either performs a root canal or yanks that troublesome tooth right out. But trigeminal neuralgia duplicates that pain on a recurring basis with seemingly no rhyme or reason. Anything can trigger it, something as simple as shaving, eating, or brushing teeth. The result is immediate, intense nerve pain in the jaw and the face described by sufferers as the equivalent of getting a root canal with no anesthesia, and the cause is next to invisible. Number 14. One small pinch. What causes this mysterious disorder? No one is sure, but in most cases, the most common cause seems to be when an artery becomes compressed against the trigeminal nerve. As the two rub against each other, the nerve's protective barrier gets worn away, exposing the nerve to painful stimuli that can cause it to go into overdrive. This can be corrected via a tricky surgery, but in many cases this isn't the cause of never-ending pain. The issue might be an underlying defect in the nerve or its sheath, meaning that it can be easily corrected in all cases, and this can lead to some extreme solutions. Number 13. The Lesser Evil the pain of trigeminal neuralgia is so intense that people are often willing to do anything to stop it, and the first solution is usually medication. Anti-epileptic drugs often help slow down the nerve's overreaction, but it comes with many side effects. If surgery to move the artery away from the nerve isn't effective, some patients have even chosen to have the nerve blocked or disconnected, which removes the ability to feel pain caused by the disorder, but can also result in permanent lack of feeling in part of the jaw. The good news is you're not likely to have the disorder anytime soon. Number 12. One in a million? Trigeminal neuralgia is one of the rarest disorders out there, although not as rare as that. It's estimated only 12 in 100,000 people will be diagnosed with the disorder. This means you're not likely to suffer from it, but for those who do, it can be a double-edged sword. Much like fibromyalgia, which is largely an invisible disorder, the rarity of the disorder means it can be hard to get diagnosed, and many doctors might be tempted to prescribe pain medication and get the patient out of their office so they can move on to something they understand better. But the more people are diagnosed, the more answers people are finding. Number 11. An Evolving Puzzle No one likes a visit to the dentist, and that's putting it lightly, so people who feel that level of pain intermittently will be seeking answers in a hurry. So far, it's been determined that it seems to occur more in people over 50, and women are more likely to have it than men. But with so many possible causes, and the trouble being rooted in a nerve under the skin and not associated with any visible physical symptoms, it is likely the disorder will continue to be a mystery for years to come. Invisible disorders are the trickiest, but this next one may be one of the deadliest. Number 10. Not a migraine We've all had headaches, maybe you didn't sleep enough and tried to cover it up with too much coffee, or maybe you woken up from a night out drinking with your friends with your head spinning. But some headaches are worse than others, and none are worse than cluster headaches. Getting that name because they tend to occur in clusters of time, usually at the same time each day. These headaches are associated with intense bursts of head pain that make the worst migraine or brain freeze feel like nothing, and they can be completely debilitating. Number 9. High Intensity 
What does a cluster headache feel like? Sufferers have said it's worse than a kidney stone or childbirth, normally beginning suddenly and resulting in intense pain on one side of the head, usually grounded around the eye. It can last between 15 minutes and 3 hours and can be associated with other symptoms, affecting the eye and the nose. These cluster headaches can happen multiple times a day, which leads to it being near impossible to concentrate on work, school, or anything else you might have to do that day. And like so many other disorders, it's hard to find the cause. Number 8. All in the mind? Doctors have examined the brains of cluster headache sufferers but haven't come up with any concrete answers to what causes them. However, they did find a possible clue in one tiny gland deep in the brain. Via brain scans, they were able to examine activity in different parts of the brain during an attack and found elevated activity in the hypothalamus, which is responsible for regulating several key nervous system roles. Is this the cause of the disorder or just an unfortunate side effect? No one is sure yet, but for those suffering from the disorder, time is at a premium. Number 7. Stopgap Measures For those dealing with cluster headaches, they're usually desperate for any answers. Bad attacks of cluster headaches can take a person from a high-functioning professional to a shut-in in only a few weeks. There are no concrete cures. The main focus is on prevention and alleviation. The best way to stop or slow down a cluster headache mid-attack is through the use of high-flow oxygen, which has shown 75% effectiveness in reducing their severity. Medication is also used, but standard headache relief medications have proven ineffective. But there may be hope if research is allowed to proceed. Number 6. Fun Guys One of the most promising new treatments for cluster headaches comes from Connecticut where researchers from Yale and the Veteran Affairs Division are working on treatments using the compound psilocybin, which might sound familiar. That's because it's the key compound found in magic mushrooms, psychedelic fungi which are illegal federally for recreational use, but are becoming increasingly involved in medical research in the same way cannabis has been for decades. These treatments are showing some good results in reducing the frequency of the attacks. Will this become the gold standard? Maybe, if the government lets it. But the most painful condition out there can start with the simplest of things, a minor injury. Number 5. Just one bump Imagine a young athlete breaks her ankle in a game, gets a cast in crutches, and goes through rehab to get back to her old strength once healed. But while her bone is strong as ever after only a few months, somehow the pain doesn't go away. Shooting up her leg frequently at random times, and to make it worse, it seems to be spreading. This is reality for those who suffer from complex regional pain syndrome, a disorder characterized by intense, chronic pain that starts after an injury but sends the body's pain receptors into overdrive. And much like some of the previous disorders, it can completely derail a person's life. Number 4. A Painful Mystery CPRS is a rare disease, but it's becoming increasingly common, with as many as 200,000 Americans diagnosed with it each year. It most commonly starts in the arms or legs and usually starts after a sprain, fracture, or stroke. Whatever the cause, it has some common symptoms, an intense throbbing pain in the affected area, swelling and hotness of the skin, and reduced mobility. It can even affect nail and hair growth in the area and make a sufferer more susceptible to heat or cold near the injury. And that's where things get weird, because it migrates. Number 3. A Traveling Disorder Chronic pain is a common issue after an injury, but it can be easy to assume it's simply the result of an unresolved injury in the affected area. But that doesn't make sense when it starts in one limb and then starts causing intense pain in another one. Roughly half of CRPS sufferers report that the pain started in one limb but eventually moved to another. How it migrates varies, but about half cases reported that it moved to the opposite side of the body, while about 30% said it moved up or down the same side of the body. And this bizarre behavior led to many doctors assuming it was a mental health issue. But it was anything but. Number 2. A Plan of Attack Many patients give up hope after meeting one doctor after another who dismisses their concern. After all, the x-rays aren't showing anything and the doctor has many other patients to look at that day. But while there's no cure for CRPS right now, doctors have made a lot of progress in developing treatments. Many cases, especially those where treatment starts early, are able to be alleviated with physical therapy. This works because it boosts the circulation and the blood flow in the affected area and reverses the nervous system issues that occur when an injured body part is kept from moving. But serious cases demand serious solutions. Number 1. Calling in the reinforcements 
When physical therapy isn't cutting it, doctors can prescribe medications, starting with over-the-counter drugs like acetaminophen, but including addictive opioids. This condition may have made many people more vulnerable during the opioid epidemic. After all, it's a condition with no clear cause and no clear cure. That means if people find a medication that works, they're likely to be on it perpetually. And that's why doctors have stopped leaning so heavily on these medications for treatment and now often suggest nerve blocks, injections that turn off a nerve's pain receptors temporarily and give the nerve time to heal. And as for many CRPS sufferers, nothing is more important than neutralizing that pain and getting back on the sports field. Want to know more about painful conditions? Check out The Worst Pain Ever. These injuries will make you cry like a baby. Or watch Why Do You Have Pain Here When You Run for another strange mystery of the human body.